Australia, February of 1991. The seventh General Assembly of the World Council of Churches. A rock music concert by Aboriginals in the Assembly's worship tent. In this same tent, Orthodox ecumenists celebrated the Divine Liturgy. The Aboriginal rituals held in the Assembly tent included pagan elements. They were not simply a folkloric or cultural presentation. They expressed the pagan foundation of Aboriginal civilization. This assembly is a milestone for the World Council of Churches. The Holy Spirit was blasphemed. Pagan, pantheistic and animistic ideas were preached. And even our Lord was blasphemed. Presbyterian theologian Dr. Chung Hyung Kyung, together with all the spirits of creation, invoked the spirit of the liberator, our brother Jesus. Come, the spirit of the liberator, our brother Jesus. The presence of people of other religions at the assembly is clearly evident. Hindus, Buddhists, Jews, Muslims and others. Dr. Anatan Ram Rambachan, Hindu. Vidale Mahinda, Buddhist. Not only were they welcomed, but they even took an active part in the proceedings. Religious unity is especially important since it enables to establish a peaceful world. Of their ancient cultures, paganism, blasphemies, heathens. But when churches in the north and west appropriate the consumerism, militarism, and paternalism, of our cultures, we speak of And the yet, theology. the orthodox ecumenists still remain organic members of a pan-heretical Protestant organization. We have been listening to you for And they are the objects of the aggressive challenges of the third world theology of Dr. Chung, who does not hesitate to declare, Buddhism and shamanism are my mother, and my father is Christianity. Yes. We are dangerous, but in that danger, there is a walk of the Holy Spirit. Such, Open unfortunately, the is the so fall of the Protestants, and a fall in which the Orthodox are Christ. taking part. Thank you, Dr. Chen. Meanwhile, the Orthodox ecumenists have drawn even closer to the Roman Catholics. How is this justified? Do the Roman Catholics perhaps have a different attitude towards other religions? Until about the middle of our century, the papacy was confined to a condition of isolation and monologue. An historical landmark is the Second Vatican Council, 1962 to 1965, which led to a spectacular openness, not only to other Christians, but also to other religions. 
the chief inspirer of this policy of openness, Pope Paul VI, on Pentecost 1964, established the office of the Holy See for non-Christians for the expansion of the interreligious vision. The politics of this policy of openness are expressed quite characteristically in the so-called apostolic journeys of the Pope throughout the world. The many impressive trips of the Popes to the five continents, which were initiated immediately after Vatican II by Pope Paul VI, as well as the presence of Roman Catholics in non-Christian countries, posed the burning question of culture. How can the gospel be incorporated into? How will it gain a foothold in? And how will it be applied to the cultures of various peoples? Whatever the case, this process presents a danger with regard to the integrity of the Christian faith. 